and welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset, where we help you bulletproof your mind through health, fitness, and entertainment. So in today's episode, we go over why it's important to build your physical pension. That's right, build your physical pension, not just pay into it. So we got six key foundational things that you must be doing to build your physical pension to live a longer, healthier, and happy lifestyle. But before we get into today's episode, we want to share that we are personal trainers, and if you're looking to work with one of us, you can find a link to our consultation forms below. And if you're finding this for the first time, make sure that you follow us on social media. You can find me at Coach Crosser, and you can find James at Raw Gym Fit. I also have a private Facebook group, which is called Bulletproof Coaching, where we have weekly challenges, live Q&As, and much much more so if you're interested in joining that click the link below and i'll see you guys in there so without further ado let's get into today's interesting one two three oh shit guys <laughs> well, so upgraded we're upgraded but they're not plugged in so <laughs> it just looks good <laughs> you still have shitty audio and it too. means that i can swing forward when i start talking i need to i'll need to like uh, get that set up for me so uh, i know. can swing in and out i know uh, you don't really swing in and out but it's you're very hyperactive when uh, you're... Uh, maybe if it uh, when you're fucking at it, so aye. aye. So podcast upgrades, get some mics coming in. We're just waiting on the the mixer, so our voices are going to sound. I agree. I agree. Super, <laughs> super sexy. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, and our camera for the guest. Aye, 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 so. aye. So aye. So guest is coming on very, very soon. Uh, it will be announced very, very, very next, soon. Next week, hopefully. Next weekend, we'll probably plan it for. Yeah. For that day. Um, right. Let's get into it. Overrated, underrated. I've got one for you. I've lost it. <laughs> no, you're joking. <laughs> no, no, no. So, overrated, underrated. Mobility training on every time you go into the gym before you work out. <laughs> Just keep so, adding stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, before you work out, before you do this and that. Uh, oh, that's an obvious answer. Right. I mean... It's obvious so, to you. Uh, so, so underrated. Yeah, absolutely. So... That, like obviously I think every overrated, underrated we've came to a conclusion that it's probably a bit of both sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's so underrated though. Aye. For everybody. So for every single person. It's funny it's funny that you say that because I know somebody another PT was slagging my clients because most of them have more or less the same um or similarities in their mobility stuff, but you could always tell in the gym who who was following my clients, who was following my programming because mm -hmm. we're doing ninety nineties and all that sort of stuff, and uh, one of the one of the PTs were like, "Oh, is that you doing your fifty minute warm up?" And I was like, "You're so far from the truth." And one of my other clients who goes to a place in uh, in the actually another gym in the Airdrie, um, all the PTs in their slagger when she didn't know she was like, "What's that going to do?" I'm like, "You're fucking personal trainers. You should know better." Right. So I definitely think underrated uh -huh. mobility training. Um, it's no the it's not the sexiest thing in the world, but mate, my warm up. I, I think I was <laughs> yours is sexy. You make you put you're listening to like bumping grind music. <laughs> mate, I, I, I like I would struggle to do that in a normal gym. I think now. Yeah. You think so? Uh, this, I the kind of stuff that's got me on. I it's just I don't know. It's like I would I mean I would, I would do it, but I would know I'd be getting looks after every day. Like what is he doing? <laughs> but see the benefits already. Like see my high bar squats, see my negative high bar squats, knee butt wink, all the yeah. way. I was actually seeing that. Um, so we were both training yesterday. Aye. Um, and I seen that you're squatting. And I was like, "That's fucking low, man." Nay, 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 butt wink. And usually, even when I go that low, there's a wee teeny butt wink. Yesterday was none, and I reckon it's just because I've changed. I've done a couple of ex I've done a couple of things in my warm up that I never usually do. I never even I would have thought they would have helped my hips. Aye. Honestly, but no. I think the f combination also though of doing compound lifts more than some of the accessory work that you were aye, doing aye, before aye, as well. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, so aye, so mobility training, this is like priming your muscles, priming your joints for the said workout. For um, just life as well. Aye, well, that's the thing. So, and the reason I've picked this is for today's overrated, underrated is because today's topic, we're going to go into everything that involves building your physical pension. Dale so loves you, this word. Dale, love I'd never heard this word before I met Dale and I was like, you know what, it's actually I a need fucking quality way because I was like, the way I explain it to cl clients, if I just said to them, aye. your physical pension, they'd be like, oh, I get it, I that get it. That kind of makes sense. Aye, 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 aye. So let me, um, let me give credit where credit's due. So there's a guy on Instagram called Rob Westra. He's from, I think he's Australian, but he's living kind of in, 
in Scotland somewhere. I think he's living up north. That might be completely butchering that. But his Instagram handle is your physical pension. And it was the first time I ever, like you said, heard, I was that, like, heard that buzzword. That helps me. Under, under, like help, it helps me communicate what I'm trying to communicate without aye. speaking for five to ten minutes aye, aye, or what I'm trying to explain to a client. So we pay into our f- pensions because as we retire, we want to enjoy the lives of luxury and mm-hmm. not have to worry about having to work all the time. This is how you need to look at um, your health and fitness. Absolutely. You need to build your physical pension and um, not just pay into it. So think about, fast forward to that time where you, it might not, for a lot of people, it's kind of, I know a lot of my peers who stopped paying into their pension. I don't know why I'm talking into this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just getting used to it. I'm just getting used oh. to it, kind of pulling it towards me. Um, but I, I know a lot of my friends and stuff, when I started working, they were like, pension? Fuck that, man. I'll die before I'm, 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 I'm able to retire and they cancelled their pension. And I think there's a lot of people in that frame of mind in their 20s Aye. who don't work out because they're like, what the fuck do I need to work out for? Aye. I don't want to look at. I don't. I don't care about looking good. Aye. Like fuck, going to the gym. That's the problem. It's all David looks. Aye, I well, was in that mindset. Like, I'm in that mindset. It's all. David we all looks. go through it. It's what drives aye. us towards fitness. Uh, fitness. That's what. You, that's how you get it. Um. So I. So and a lot of them. So like I said, cancelled their pension. But as we start getting a, to the age that I'm and getting into my thirties and you're having kids and um you kind of finding someone to marry and you're maybe uh, the quote-unquote settling down a wee bit more i think this is when it starts hitting you a wee bit more of going like fuck i need to start looking it wasn't after even my health for me. It was, obviously i'm only 25 so oh, turning 26 soon so it wasn't that for me it was seeing friends and family deteriorating about me aye i go they have no sense of health and fitness i go that's that's the link that they've got Aye. You know, they used to try to blame genetics and that. Like, you can blame genetics all you want, and things will happen to you that you didn't expect 100%. There's stuff in you genetically which will lead you to be a pre precursor to, to the likes of cancer and that. Yeah. But for a lot of my friends and family that went through some shitty things, their diet, no, their diet was shocking, exercise was shocking. Aye. They were really, really inactive, and that hit them at one point Aye. and when they got ill they got really really ill Aye, and I went do you know what maybe there's maybe there's more to this just lifting than just what looking good and feeling good so exactly how I, I think I was fortunate enough to have um, I think because now that I've not had any strong parent like um, what do you call it role models type of thing mm-hmm. um, I think because I've always been pretty solo and it's part of my own <laughs> fault like I don't I don't reach out to my mum and dad a lot, like I kind of expect them, not expect, but I, I wait for them to come to me. But in my early 20s, I think I was sort of, I think I was starting to piece this together now, it's kind of weird talking about this, but I think I was kind of looking for some sort of role model figure in that, someone that was interested aye, in aye. health and fitness and the things that I was doing and entrepreneurial thing, or just try to be, try to earn a wee bit more money and climb the corporate ladder, whatever it was at that time. And I came across the, the Mind Pump podcast mm-hmm. and I think I took a lot from, what they were saying and they were always kind of drumming that message this was guys who'd had years of personal training aye, experience aye, so I think it allowed me to project 10 years of going through it myself and then going actually there's more to it in this game so hearing that message at the start it did resonate a lot with me mm-hmm. and it allowed me to become more self-aware and pay attention to my, the people around me and I was fortu- well, I was working in a corporate place so I was one of the youngest guys and you had people working in there for 30-40 years aye. and you've seen their health deteriorating and I'm like like you, if you guys lifted weights, you'd have more resilience to the shit that's going on just now. Aye. Like, uh, and then I was like, why is no many, why is so little people doing this? Mm-hmm. And it's like you said, like a lot of people think of it as a self-centered sort of obnoxious place, Aye. which is is far from it. It's complete opposite. Like you, you go into a gym environment for the first time, you might feel like everybody's looking at you. But I think if you went to up to one of the biggest guys in the gym, and say, can you? Give me a hand. Can you tell me what what exercise you're going to be going? They go, hi. I think like, buzzing. Like, they'd, be, they'd be absolutely buzzing or not. Whereas you, in your mind, you've been taught to go. These guys are big, scary guys. I don't even know where that comes from. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't actually I know get, where that comes from. Where I that get, stereotype comes from. I think it's a set. Well, or the the, the stereotype that aye, the stereotype that oh, these big guys are big, scary. And look at look at fuck. I bet look at TikTok. Look who's trending on TikTok. Look who's trending on YouTube. Ah, yeah, it's. Yeah. Young guys with their tops off, the fucking trend twins. Aye, like, aye, aye. That's intimidating for aye, me. Too. I'm like, I aye, would aye. not want to be aye, in aye, that gym. Aye. No, that's true. You know, that's screaming in that. True. So, because that's what people think gyms are like aye. and what health and fitness should be. Um, but a lot. But back to that point, like an amazing, like 
way of communicating is building your physical pension. And this goes for anyone. Doesn't matter how late you're getting uh-huh. into it or how kind of young you're listening to. So this. The, the reason I truly get into lifting, and when it, when I look back, same as you, I looked at my mum. She had really bad mental health, and I went, she does nothing about it. And then I went to the gym. I went, this is really good for my mental health. Mm-hmm. So I continued to do it, but I was doing things so wrong that it was still impacting my mental health. I went, do you know what? I need to do this a wee bit healthier. Mm-hmm. I need to look at other things that only just got to the gym. And eating food, mm-hmm. I need to go. What food am I eating? What is the rest of my routine like? Mm-hmm. What What is the rest of my habits like? Once I looked at the rest of my habits, once I looked at the rest of my food, once I changed my food, once I changed my habits, once I started training for not just for looks, mm-hmm. and I started training for my health, my mental health, I go, oh my physical health's a lot better, yeah. my skin's a lot better, I look a lot better. Crazy, it all ties in. Do you know what I mean? It, it all I was ties like, in. you know what? I was like, I don't want to be. And then obviously, as the friends and family, I don't want to be them. Who mm-hmm. are old and they're, they're deteriorating at a much quicker age. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, said, I don't, I don't worry about that. No, exactly. And it's, it's generally, if like, if you're not doing it, it's something that, if, see if you just do it like one day a week, it could be three days a week, it could be five days a week, but as long as you're doing it on a consistent, regular basis, like Aye. once a week, yeah, even once every two weeks, that will still. This is going to, this is going to laugh. But I've always said, I'm going to be the dad at school gates where everybody's going. Well, <laughs> the skill gates. Ah, you know, they're, they're obviously waiting on the wane. I'm like, I'm like, man. You know what I mean? Big daddy Delph. <laughs> I want to be that guy. I've always said that. Like, and I, I, you I be stu- a single dad at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, running the parents. Not clubs. even that. Like, you, you always see, like, you always hear people like fucking this and that. Like, wh- why do you want to? Why do you want to have your health? And go. You want to be one of the parents at the school gates, and everybody's going, they're doing well. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Because you you, 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 you want to be the parents who are like, oh, they're doing really well, they got. No, you know what I mean? They've got the, and they, they look good, they look like they're doing well, yeah. and you're doing well. It's not yeah. like you just look at it. Oh, you're not you just are acting it. it. Do you know what aye, I mean? You're living by those principles. Aye. aye. And it's principles we've got to get into this episode. Aye, and I honestly don't know why. Like, I've always thought that's the scenario in my head. Mm-hmm. But that's the scenario I've had. No, I've, like, I've, 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 do you know what I mean? I kinda, I've had like this similar like. I think it's because you, when you're childhood, you go... You always remember, like I always remember, like there was sometimes one there, and I just have to walk him. Mm-hmm. And I go, I would, I would want to be there, and I just want to, would want to just be there. Aye. And I go, oh, that's them. Because, you know I, I, mean? I, I remember, like obviously, some when we were in high school, and um, some pals or some people in the same year, like their mum and dad would come to school and say, "Oh, like you've seen how good looking his his dad is, how exactly. good his mum is." Exactly. And I was like, oh, "I want to be the good looking one." Aye. The little did I know it wasn't necessarily about the look inside things. That was just somebody living by these core principles, aye. building, D- doing well for himself, and I think, confident. Aye, I think the other thing as well, like being a role model for my kids, is oh, probably aye. the biggest thing. I don't, I don't know what that feeling is going to look like because I don't have kids just now, no. but I know that. I won't be as well, I'd imagine I'm not going to be as selfish as what I'm just now and it, everything will shift no, and there'll probably be a, a stronger urge for me to keep doing what I'm doing and keep working on my health because I want to be there right. for their like for high school for their their wedding for their for mm-hmm. grandkids I want to be I want to be able to live as long as I can with an empowerment if you build a fantastic time. base before they come then you can maintain it yeah. a lot easier. But also, I don't think, like, because I think there'll be some people listening and then like, well, I've fucked it. I've not done it for the no, last... No, no, no. I'm in my 40s no. or I'm in my 50s or whatever. We've so people at 50, 60 ma- who have changed their uh, life around in three, so getting, six months. Uh, getting into this, like, there's not going to be a one size that fits all, no matter where you're at in no. this journey. Um, I was going to say... Oh, yeah, sorry. We've not finished it over the underrated there. Hi. Uh, oh, is it? Is that it? Uh, well, it's not, uh, there's nothing else to say about the underrated, is it? I was just going to say, like, we do mobility before every single yep. session. And the reason I'm saying it's over- underrated, I could see the point of someone arguing, going, why are you working on your hip flexors when you're doing a shoulder overhead day, right? So well, I, under- I understand that. Well, but I- I've got a couch stretch before my incline bench press, and at first I was like, why? I can and see then you drive your legs into the ground. Though. It's not even that, it's because I've done squats the day before. Mm-hmm. So it's working on mobility for before and after. It's mm-hmm. the full boomer. It's not just for that single day, it's for your def- everything all Aye. the time. More so I see value because most likely people who go to the gym is two or three days. Day. No, it's two or three days a week, right? So if in those two or three days a week you're going to the gym... No moving much else. It doesn't matter what you're hitting in that session, you're going to benefit from mobilising your joints. And you're going to see the value of it. You're going to, I feel quite good. And it's going to encourage you to make other smarter decisions kind of throughout Aye. the day. Absolutely. So the reason I, did, I brought that up is because we actually have that as one of the points in here as well. So we got six points, six foundational pillars yeah. to take you through today of what makes... 
or how do you go about building your physical pension? And this isn't just about lifting weights. This, there's there's tons of stuff in here yeah. that you will get good value from yeah. and hopefully get you to think about things a wee, a wee bit differently. <clears throat> so building your physical pension, I guess we just explained a wee bit why it's important. Um, but I don't think it's just like pension wise, like when you think about it in that, that sense, like I know very little people who are over the age of 60 that aren't dealing with some sort of chronic illness, whether it's chronic pain or it's an actual diagnosed illness. Mm -hmm. And lots of research suggests or combats against that one of the best ways you can protect yourself. I think I seen something crazy the other day. It was like one in two people get cancer now. Is that like something, is? something wild like that is from that a, from a, a, a probably a, an area that they had looked at. Aye, so aye. It's, lot it's becoming so common and it's no as kind of scarce because we're more well informed. We've got better ways of catching it sooner. All that great stuff. But for me, waiting for a med. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you farted. Oh, nice. Aye, nice. Right in the right in the middle of my fucking speech as well. Yes, smelly, no, dirty. Going, I've lost my train of thought. No, I can't smell it. I can't, it's ruined my brain waves. <laughs> no, um, but rather than waiting for a medical intervention at that point, like one of the best ways you can protect yourself is having a wee bit more muscle mass. Mm. Now, you don't be a hench like a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. but having dense muscle on you is a protective mechanism right. towards anything that you do. Because if you're bed bound for eight weeks, you, you atrophy, you lose that uh, expensive tissue. So, Aye. and through that process, if you get more on you, then the impact isn't as bad, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Before I became a PT, and uh, before I'd ever met you, and before I'd really looked into it that much, <clears throat> as I had a family get me like, no well, and I was like, oh, can I believe it, can I believe it, this, this, this. And I was just sitting there like, have you seen his diet? Have you seen it? He just sits in his arse all day. Yeah. And they're like, I bet it's genetic. And I was like, come on. And everybody's like looking at me like, how can you say this? How can you say this? I'm like, come on. Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody thought like me, right? Nobody thought like me. Oh, dare you say anything like, no. see when people go, because what a lot, and fuck they're, it, I'm just going to say what I'm like, saying. How the fuck can no, you no, say no. that? Because they're, they're in that situation that can't be changed. So Aye. what is most people in that situation? They're empathetic and they're sympathetic and they're getting, not that they're getting attention, like people are like, oh no, poor you, like blah, blah, blah. But like you say, there has to be a harsh conversation within yourself to go, fuck, a lot of this was self-driven from... Me? the choices that, that I had made. Me? Now, it's not going to eliminate it completely, but in terms of the recovery process, yeah. God, like, God forbid, like, if someone's listened to this and it's bloody, it is something like five months to live, like that sort of stuff, like that, that's, I can only imagine what a horrible situation to be in. Ah, yeah, yeah. But I can bet you if I've put in that situation. The situation, no, that, I, the situation that I'm talking about was self-inflicted. Aye, but, no, hold on, but going back to that point, if... If, because that's worst case scenarios. I know people oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, going, that's not. How can you be so sensitive to that? But for me, the, the reason why it's important for me still to lift weights, regardless if that situation comes to me or not, mm -hmm. I want to be empowered enough where I can still be healthy enough to go and do things I do and live the best life that I can on within that so five I actually window. can't remember who it was, but he got like six months to live. The brain tumour. Aye. Aye. And he was Amazing. just like, fuck it. Amazing I'm going to do what the fuck I want. Aye. And he just goes and does it. And do you know what? That's it. all he can do. Aye. That's his mindset, that's the best mindset, instead of going, oh no, and then just going to a further slump, he goes, fuck it, I can do what I want, and mm. to be in that situation, who knows what that feels like, because we don't, but no, to, be able to, to be able to flick your mindset and go, I'm just going to go and fucking live my life, that's a fucking amazing thing to teach other people who don't even go through some, don't even go through things at that extreme. No, and I think this is why we, we named this show Mindset, because... Mindset is such a powerful tool oh, for, for everyone. So like you said, like you can have two people in that situation. Mm -hmm. You get one person who's just like, oh my God, like whatever. Like I would, I, I don't want to use the word victim mentality, but it, that's what it is. Like yeah. there's very little they control. So like what the other guy's doing is go, I can't control much of this. That's what I'm so going, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to enjoy it. And I think that's, that's, that, that's inspiring principles to, to live on, no matter where you're at in life. Because, like, I done, I said this thing on Insta story, the other, uh, my Instagram stories the other day, and I was like, fucking hell, and the guy was in an interview, and he's like, if I can give you a million pounds tomorrow, would you take it? And I'm like, aye. And I was like, how would you feel? So I feel fucking amazing. Aye. I'm like, right, good. So you're all perked up. And I was like, so say I could give you 10 million pounds, but it meant you wouldn't wake up the next day. Would you still take it? And I'm like, no. And he's like, so what you're telling me is you value... Um, waking and up tomorrow more than £10 million mm -hmm. and the guy was like holy shit what a perspective to have and I heard that and I was like 
what the fuck? Like, yes, we can get stressed, but see, like, even just me saying that just now, I'm like, ah, what the fuck am I getting stressed from? Let me just get up and make uh, the most yeah. of my day. Uh, but I'm going to be a bit off topic there. So, topic there. So, um, it's the thing around building your physical pension, just like paying into your pension, is something you're going to be doing forever. Forever. And it's something you're doing daily, weekly, monthly. It's something that you're going to consistently keep doing yeah. because it's going to pay dividends in that. Yeah. And the best thing about it is, like you said there, being the dad at the school date, the, the, the DILF at the school school gates, if Aye. you call it that. Aye. With the GILF. Or the MILF. You're a, you're a woman watching the MILF. <laughs> or the nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know what I mean. So, like, um, you, you seen James coming in the home? Aye. So being, the, being in, in that gap, so right now, like us working out, I said this before, us working out just now and being with our friends, like it's, you can tell, but I think is there's not as much a difference between us consistently living healthy and habits and living by good practices and people who aren't just now because we're 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 still young. We have our youth behind us. We can yeah. get away with a wee bit more. Yeah. Compare us to the same group of people in five years, five years from that, Aye. ten years from that. As you start to get into your forties, fifties, and sixties, if you're paying those into that physical pension, mm -hmm. the difference is massive. Yeah. It, it literally goes from the ability of being able to get up off the couch pain free. To someone who's can't even get out, get right. out their chair. They need a, a walker. They need whatever it is. My, so, my client the other day, she was like, "Oh, what did she say again?" I've lost my train of thought there, but she was like, "You're never going to believe this." But she was like, "So she's five weeks in, smashing it, hmm. changed massively." And she's like, "I used to pick up my grand Wayne and I used to go, ooh, <laughs> right." And she was like, "I didn't even notice. I picked her up for like the third time." She says, and she went, "I didn't say anything." And she's like. I've no, I've no had to make any noise to pick her up. She was yeah. like, and that she was like, swinging she, her about her head. She was like, you're not gonna believe me. I was like, no, no, I believe you. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're squatting, you're benching, you're deadlifting, you're carrying. Yeah. I was like, and you're doing it well every week, and you've done it well, mm -hmm. and you've you're losing weight. And she's like, and not, and it's slowly starting to tick. She's like, right, 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 like small things like that mm -hmm. actually play a bigger role. You don't realise you're doing it when you're in it, mm -hmm. but as soon as you commit it, you go fuck. I was struggling to pick my grandchild up. Aye. Do you know what I mean? And you never even wanted to get to that stage. It's like Natalie Lahomose says, you're better to learn from other people's mistakes than learn from your own. Aye. Do you know Aye. what I mean? Aye. Why, why you're obviously going to learn from your own. Yeah. But if people are making massive mistakes and you're still not learning from them, mm -hmm. then at the end of the day, that's your mistake. That's your, a big mistake on your part. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the whole reason why. Hopefully, you're bought into why you should. Hopefully. Let's get into something like that. If you're not, then. Like, so, my. It, Going back to a point, like some of my mates and even even my brother to an extent, he was he was in a mad frame of mind, like in his early twenties, late teens, he's like, I'm not gonna live to my thirties, so what's the point? I'm just gonna fuck it now. And it's like, what a, why why think like that? Like I think the thing as well, like a lot of people think working out and lifting weights and living healthier life means you have to sacrifice a boring lifestyle. Or you have to live, sorry, you have to live a boring lifestyle, but you absolutely don't. Commit forty five minutes twice a week with your life and then eat somewhat more nutritious foods. See, the thing is, that's what I always sound. See, when you drink less and you eat less shit, you become a funner person than boring things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I am buzzing about life Some a lot of the time. Sometimes I'm no, but then simple things. Mm. And people are like, how can you enjoy it? And it's no things I used to enjoy. Like, I can tell you this right now, I used to think they were fucking shite. Mm -hmm. But I can go and enjoy things that are boring. It's only boring. It's like sugary foods. Mm -hmm. When you can, when you don't eat sugary foods for a long time, you go back to them. You go, they didn't taste as good as I thought, mm -hmm. and that is what happens with fun stuff to you. you know, yeah, they go back to them, and you're like, it's like a night out. You're like, yeah. this is shit. Clubs, going to clubs for aye. me just now. I know aye. you're like, like you have a different. It's not necessarily clubs; it's more raves and that. But see, like, nah, mate, but I, I love raving, but try to, if my pal try to get me to go to rave, I'm like, ah, nah. Aye. I love the tunes. Mm -hmm. like, I love music, and I love the tunes that go on at the raves. But going to a rave. Especially if it's only three in the morning, that is the last thing I'd ever want to do. That's what I think. Couldn't like, think anything worse. Like, we went into a club when uh, Edinburgh, when our American friends were over visiting, and I was in. And I was like, man, this is shit. This is terrible. Is it? How did I used to enjoy this? Aye. But it's like you said, right? So onto the first pillar. Then we just we spoke about it in the intro there. Um, mobility training, getting your your joints healthy. Yep. Um, looking at how you move, yep. walking, bending, pulling, jumping. These are all fundamental skills that we should have as human beings. Yep. And the older we get, 
the the more crucial it is to keep these movements in. Yep. I'll guarantee you, if you're in your late twenties and you you or you're you're out of school for more than like five ten years, you know the this, this will caught me no, already. No, I try and jump. When think about the last time you jumped, and then try and do it and try it. Man, and I, I bet you're like, fucking hell, I don't know how to jump. Aye. That that sort of cognition and ability to fire up your muscles and move your body in that way is going to be the same with walking, bending over pulling something towards you, pressing something in front of you, lifting above your head, pulling down. These are all fundamental movements that if you don't use it, you, you lose, lose it. it so, and I think that's why probably communicating resistance training is probably one of the best, if not probably the only way mm -hmm. to keep that skill alive and keep the, the healthiness with that. Now would you go would you say like mobility training, you could you could get away with not doing resistance training initially? Nah. Nah, because I find a lot of my mobility actually comes from squatting. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, 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 so much deadlifting. But I would say squatting regularly. Like I just have more mobility instantly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't squat too heavy most of the time. I guess squat three times a week. Now. Yeah. Is it maybe four? It's maybe four. Maybe all four, four sessions I've got a squat pattern. But it's only one heavy. So I squat four times a week. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that's how I feel my squats will go better. Like, as we were speaking about this, speaking about this before. The, better, the more you squat, the more mobile you get, as long as you're going and staying in your active range of motion. Yeah, yeah. And then, obviously, your mobility training just increases that. Obviously, yeah, a lot of people are not able to squat four times a week, but I find where, by squatting, your mobility goes up. But I think as well, like, this is the reason I asked that is because your mobility training could be body weight squats and holding for a couple of seconds at the bottom. I'm, like, not, I'm not a fan of body of weight squats. No, for sitting in an active range. Ah, yeah, yeah. I just, like, I just don't, I just don't. I'd rather get get away to some sort. I, so I'm thinking a demographic that used to come to my mobility classes. They ah, couldn't yeah, add yeah. resistance to that at that point. That's that's the only reason I'm saying. By all means, yeah. If you mm -hmm. if you're getting down at a squat, you're like, I'm not seeing much challenge here. And that's why I'm saying active range. So you should feel tightness in your hips. You should feel like work, oh, aye, feel drive your knee over to one side, move mm -hmm. your knee over to the left. Oh, like, doesn't need to be just a static squat, but having that type of training. Is definitely something everyone should be doing, and it's one of the core pillars of uh, of longevity is having some sort of mobility mm -hmm. a couple of times throughout the week. Ideally, every day, I would say. Aye. Um, I've said to some of my clients, making it a daily habit, either a nighttime routine or a, a, a morning routine. They hate that. <laughs> hey, they hate so that. My, my clients will go, see that mobility day? I'm meant to do that once a week. I'm at least once a week. <laughs> Come on, it takes about 15 minutes. But you have to start small with something. No, I know, I know. So I even just start with one movement. And I've uh, not done this, but I've done this with, with one of my clients before. And she's like, I, can't, I keep forgetting. And I got her to put something on. I was like, what do you do every day? And she's like, go to the fridge, right? Go to the toilet. And I got her to put a wee sticky note in the, in the, the, like the corner of the door Aye. or on the front of the fridge. I was like, every time you see that sticky note, do your do your reps. It Aye. takes you thirty seconds, Aye. and then move on with your day. Aye. And that kind of got like it was more. I need uh, what I need my client to see is the value in it. Because right now they're like, hi, ah, you're telling me all you this, need but to I don't feel first. it. Aye. And and the best thing with mobility is like I can only lift my shoulder to here. Do a wee bit of whatever it is, and, and then, then you're like, shoulder, holy yeah. shit, I can go all the way oh, back. Yeah. So it's like right, that you should have active. You should have control over that range, but you don't. Mm -hmm. um, so mobility training that's also one of the most uh, key p uh, important pillars there. Yep. Next one then is we spoke there resistance training. Yeah. Building muscle. That yeah. Sort of thing. So you said there strength training. Well, I've got I, I've got my dad example, and he you won't mind me using him. Hurt his back. He was coming home from the pub. I seen him stopped. He's like I hurt my back a wee bit. I'm like, he's like I done this. And I was just like Nah, mate, you're just weak. <laughs> and he was like Aye, ha ha ha. I was like Nah, I'm serious. I'm like you're a weakling. And he was like, ha ha, and he was pushing him about and all that. Well, that no, because I was in the motor and he was outside, I remember it. And he's like, it, it was obviously that he'd a wee tipple. So he was a wee bit, he was a wee bit tipsy. And uh, we were all laughing about it. And I was like, you should really start getting to the gym. And I was like, I'm being serious. He's like, I'm going to the gym. I was like, what are you doing? And then next time I seen him, he told me a couple of things. I was like, look, you're, you're wasting your time doing the exercises for you. Like, you, you've told me you've hurt your back, and then you're doing this. And then this one, obviously, I'm still in gym 24. And then I said to him, day single arm. Uh, walks with a dumbbell, do things like that, do double, do farmers walks, uh, do step ups. I was like, see for you, that's got to give you more benefit. And I say, I, I said to him, about, I said to him about time. squats and deadlifts, but I was like, <clears throat> I didn't see him about squats and deadlifts then because the fact that I didn't want him to go in there and try them. Right, right. right. So then at Christmas, it was like, my my stepmom's like, fucking, 
no even no even taking her down for PT. I was like, it doesn't fucking matter come. So I no my no my shit fucking hang him. And then like he's like, no, no, I do want to come, come to your dream. He's like, oh, good and then I said, I'll come to you. I was like, banging. And the the changes have made instantaneously an eight week mind we've oh, obviously seen. We, we want to get to a stage where we are at the gates. Mm-hmm. Well obviously they're well past that stage. But they're at a stage where he touched his back, doing something simple at the back. That he would always he's always got to do again because he's that he's, he, lo- he loves his garden, does loves doing his gardening. No, he's de- he's de- left in forty five for eight mm-hmm. for three sets eight the other day. Mm-hmm. He could have never done that before. He fucking hurt it hurt holding a plant pot. I know. And a in a deadlift position. Aye. Do you know what I mean? So he's seen the benefits in eight weeks and then he'll continue. He saw it, he's a rope down. That's, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. Uh, to, and I, I said to him, I said, seeing you're doing the deadlifts, I said, see a deadlift, <coughs> what's it like? I was like, it's like picking up that plant pot that day. Aye. It's your hinge. It's like I said, it's the fundamental movement. So what you do every day, Aye. and this is why in combination with your mobility, you could have done all the mobility in the world, but he needs to strengthen those core movements. Exactly. And he couldn't strengthen the core movements with that. Exactly. Um, so I love that story. I've got multiple different... Ah, okay. yeah, there's, there's, there's loads so you go. Many. So many like, But you made a, point, a very good point there. Like, you don't need to just be the one, want to be the guy at the gates. Aye. It could generally be you're right now and you're like, man, any time I've reached over to bend something up and tie my shoes, mm-hmm. it's fucking painful. Mm-hmm. So this is why some of these movements, because this is going to train... Your range of motion, you're going to start small. and there's, The good thing about resistance training as well, like, you can do it. It's you. I, not as you, but it's, there's so many movements in it. Mm-hmm. It's not like cardio. Like, you, you don't have to go, bless you, faster, bless you, and longer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Aye. With cardio, you can only go harder, faster. That's pretty much it with most of your That's cardio. Mm-hmm. With training with weights, you can do more sets. You can do different movements, Aye. different, like, single leg stuff. Aye. Like you said, stability stuff. Like, there's so much good value in it. 100%. 100%. So, resistance training, building muscle, pretty, I mean, we spoke about that, the more and muscle if you, if, you, if you get no well, when you've got a lot of muscle, your body will use the muscle as energy first before you get more no well. Aye. If you've got no muscle, you get no well, then your body's got no source of energy. Aye, so let's play that scenario out. You're someone who doesn't have a lot of muscle mass, and you're tapped into those that, that fat storage. Um, the less body fat you have on you, you then start, be- like, if you're weaker, your joints start deteriorating, yep. your muscle, your bones, like everything just gets slower mm-hmm. and just start atrophying, fading away as, as a person, the longer you're left inactive. Yep. So like being resilient towards whatever life throws at you, that's a that's a really good practice and a good way. Yep. Um, the other one there is coordination, cognitive yep. coordination, like I said about jumping, and I was joking, but a lot of people, I remember in school actually, just gave me a wee flashback, like some people didn't have that cognitive ability to, to do the jumps, and that's what you were kind of doing in PE, you're getting yeah. your brain to tell your body to do something, but it couldn't do the fucking thing you were doing. Um, and this is where lifting weights actually can come into play, like if you find someone who, Falls every night out that you have, then you have a stability and weakness. <laughs> yeah. You have weak whether it's in your structures. muscles or your mind. Aye, like so building that that strength. I say this. To, I say this to most of the girls I train when we do walking lunges. They're like, oh, oh I don't. and then when we start doing more lunges, I goes guarantee in a couple of weeks you'll you will not fall as much. And I normally ask them, do you fall much in a night out? And it's like, ah, I've had a. And it usually just falls. comes to they're no thinking. Aye, they don't right. know how. To, they don't know how to use their brain physi- to do the simple movement. Exactly, being physically aware of that. Um, so yeah, so that's some of the benefits around the resistance training power. So let's get out with the sort of gym environment just yeah. now. Outdoor walks, movement, sunlight exposure, and that's kind of tying into building discipline. There were some points we've written down here. So out, let's start with outdoor walks in. Probably something I've seen more of a, probably COVID done this. Yeah, yeah. Kind of forced everyone out a wee bit more. Yeah. And for me, I started this before I had a dog as well, actually getting Cooper, um, forced me out in the mornings. I'm like, I need, I need to go. I need to take a walk. Or I, I mean, feel like a bad dad. I, not even that. Like <laughs> I, I, exactly. So it forces me to do the do the activity. But actually getting out, I'm like oh, I can't be bored. And I'm walking around, and kind of sun's rising and it looks fresh. It's quiet in the morning. I'm like, fuck, man. This is. I actually feel good. I feel ready to get cool. go and tackle my day. Whereas before, it was like, uh, slog yeah, up, I open up the laptop, join the fucking teams calls, either sit rep or whatever you want to call it. See, to be honest, we see it see in the morning. Even I've never been. My, I, I you said you were going to try. I'm try- I go- Mate, I go here at 20 past 8. <laughs> you said you'd be here at 8. That Aye. doesn't matter. But the traffic was Wait, really it's busy. late. Minute so, late. The traffic's really... You talk shit. I don't give a fuck, mate. <laughs> I, I've shit. been late for every job of my life. Eh? Every job of my life. Been late. That says something about you. 
No, I, that a job. No, that, I know they say that. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. No, you what I, what I'm I was, just letting you know my situation. No, what I was going to say is, you said about ten to fifteen podcasts ago that one of your habits you're going to do is get outside in the morning for ten minutes. So let's hold you accountable to that point. I know. I will start doing that. Absolutely. No, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow you... morning. <laughs> and they, they... I'm going to make James healthier, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'll start doing that, I'll start doing that. No, because honestly, like, and, and I'm joking in saying it doesn't need to be first thing in the morning, but the power of being outside. Early. Like, what was it like when you were, like, I don't know, you had, like, some things going on and there was a time when you went to walk to the Sunbed shop and came back? Like, just being outside for, oh, like, I know, no, I know no. We, are, we are stuck in here all day, but see, there was wee breaks throughout the day where we can get outside and I'm we probably saying. should. I'm you come back in, you're not sitting on your phone, you're like, right, I'm going to record the videos. Aye, I'm gonna going out a walk in nature with no phone is brilliant. It's so good. It's no, so even good. nature. It's fucking. Airdrie's <laughs> no nature. Airdrie's <laughs> scheme. <laughs> <laughs> but even going anywhere, just don't take your phone for five, ten minutes. Aye. And you just reset everything, you go, right, I'm fucking ready, man. And this is where we're probably getting to get, going to get into some of the woohoo stuff. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the sort of stuff that you kind of listen to and you're like, what is he what talking about? What a load of shite that is. But honestly, don't knock it till you try it. Like, try like, be. You can talk about steps and that, but like you can and you can do steps anywhere. But. Going out an hour walk at night, uh, my dad and stepmom, they did it five times a week. And they said, they, they always felt good anyway. But I said to them, you need to build muscle. That was like a thing. I was like, and I was, but they still go their walks and it makes them feel fucking fantastic. And I could never really fully understand why they done it all the time. But you know what? See, when you go a walk, you feel fucking fantastic. See, if you're sedentary, you need to go walks and go a walk in nature. And because you're using energy, you have more energy yeah. as well. Which it, is, it makes no which sense. Is, I, cause this is what I would say to people like, oh, when I'm hungover, I don't want to do anything. It's because you've been lying down all day. <laughs> you've moved your arm three times no, and I, you just sat and looked so at So you wake TV. up in the Monday and you're like, I really don't want to do anything again. Exactly, it's a knock-on effect. Um, so yeah, power of outdoor walks, <laughs> but nicely on to like, sunlight exposure, just yeah. getting outside in fresh air. Yeah. Like Regardless of the weather, like there's something about See, nature. Like, it's, it's crazy to think that people don't do this. It blows my mind. <laughs> like, I, see, you say that, I'm like, People just not go outside. Aye. But they don't. They don't. No, they don't. They don't. And, and See, I best people work from home, man. They'll just stay in, inside all day some Aye. days. And I would say if you're someone listening to this, like, start with a week and go for 15 minutes. If it, like, maybe even start with five. And I guarantee you do five, you do what 15. What I say, and I like this, walk to the shop. Steady fucking driving to the shop. Walk to the shop. Mm -hmm. Tesco for me is about 25 minutes away. That's only 50 minutes. Yeah, but mine's is like three mile. Aye, then yours is, <laughs> yours is far away. Fuck off. If got, I mean, if I've got no, a big corner like, shop, walk I, to the shop instead. I, it's like... It's like you've got to be doing the same... You've got to be doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So why not spend a little bit more time and just... you don't So you don't even think about it. So instead of going, I need to go a 50 minute walk, you know, go, I need to go to the shop. Yeah, so my strategy as the lighter nights start to come in is to ask clients to come for a time and I want them doing 15 minutes in that park and then back. Then back and in. Because, like, I don't want them in the inside where, like, see that? And then coming in in a session, they're like, right, I'm Aye. ready. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go as better. opposed to on a treadmill looking at a window for... for That's what I'd always find with the clients who would walk to the gym as well, actually. They would come in, perky. They would. Ready to go. Or they're like, I'm good, I'm Aye, feeling good. You are, you you're thinking about it. You're thinking, up. Aye, 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 I'm thinking up. about the movements, kind of hips have been moving, your gait and whatever it is. Um, so last one, kind of on the outdoor segment and kind of sunlight exposure, you've got cold dips and all this sort of stuff. This isn't the stuff you need to do, but more think about building discipline. Mm -hmm. Saying something you're going to do, mm -hmm. and we spoke about it before, like um, life is pretty easy these days mm -hmm. now not everybody's going to have an easy life but we ain't hunting our food we no. ain't fighting wars with each other no. like even if you look back the past 100 and years people say like they, they say saying life's easy life aye. must be easy for them no 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 life's certainly easy aye but if we sat down and looked at everything aye everything's there for us today at this point in, in everything's there for us aye at this point in 2023 we have access to technology we've got everything that we need at our fingertips most people have iPhones something else some, uh, something else can do something for us exactly exactly so um, with that being said you need to build some sort of adversity mm -hmm. because so, someone will pass away you will or, or someone will get diagnosed with some sort of illness there'll be curveballs that's thrown with you losing your job I don't know breaking a bone there's so many different things that can happen in life and this is where if you have a victim mentality and a weak mindset, it will break you. It will, and it will throw you off. Life the rails. will break you. Yeah. Life's, life's, tough. life's tough, man. Yeah, I know. Life can be tough. Like, that's how I'm 20. Oh, no, this is what? This is, I, this is that was four weeks in the cold chills every day. Aye. And some mornings you go, I just get bored. I'm like, why can't I just have a warm shower? 
<laughs> and I go, you know what? Like, how how can I just jump in this culture? Aye, it's pissy. You know what I mean, yeah. like, how can I not do that? And it's like, and then sometimes she come into what I go to what I was explaining to my client the other day. As a PT, she's like, I, I now feel like I want to work out. Right. She's like, I'm getting to that point. I was like, do you think that every time I train, I want to train? Yeah. The answer is no. But that's what I mean. Like for some people, their cold shower will be getting outside. Oh, I know, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's going. To, that's what you need to think about with your lifting weights, with your mobility. What routine. do you know? Do what Aye. can you do? Aye. But yeah, you need to go outside. Aye. So you understand why it's good for you, and it's going right. Oh, I can't be arsed. That's the time to build up, build cool. up that that discipline. Um, okay, on to one of the other pillars then, nutrition, right? Mm-hmm. So nutrition is obviously key. Yeah. But there's a there's a fine dance with nutrition because. Yes, oh, you want to. Topic. Eh? I love this kind of Aye. Topic. So, um, that mic's still on that side. Remember it was sort of charged, it's still oh, gone. So, no. Cool. Um, so, with nutrition, you have two sides of the coin. One side of the coin, pizza, burgers, beers, nights out, yep. is going to be the healthy option because you're with friends. And it, it ties nicely in the next point, but we'll come back to the obvious, which is eating a balanced, healthy diet. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think that's fruit salads and fucking all yeah. that sort of stuff, but... Ultimately, it comes down to we're keeping this super, super simple, as little processed foods in there as you can. That's what I was going to say. When you go to, when you go out with friends, family, whatever, I fucking hate when they go to this shitty quality restaurant. I'm not saying any in particular. I'm just saying. No, no. They could not. But I'm just saying you go to this shitty quality buffet. You know all the foods are sh- severely processed. You can taste it. And I'm like, I would like to go out and have the exact same meal that I had. But better quality. Yeah. I would like a burger, chips, with my chocolate fudge cake after it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean though? I would love that. But I would love the burger and the chips and all the dressings to be a much better quality. Yeah. And that's that's what I, I always get yeah, a lot of PTs obviously get into the mindset of eat the food you love, eat the food you love, eat the food you love. And I don't deny that. But I think that a lot of people for so <coughs> long are eating the food you love and they're still not seeing the results. Yeah. And I think that's too pressed. Aye. In my personal opinion, yeah. I don't, you don't press it like that, but I know that a lot of people press it far, far too much. Eat this, eat that, you can eat this, you can eat that. Ah, you can, but see, ultimately, at the end of the day, you won't see results if you continuously keep eating the foods that you love. No, I know, I know. I've, I've just went through, I've been working with a client for about 12 weeks now, and last couple of weeks, he's like, look, I'm feeling so shitty, I don't know what it is, like... Can just look over my nutrition. Calories have been there, protein's been there. So I was like, let's look into it. Consistently, there's like two or three chocolate bars every day, and I'm thinking it's a lot. that's probably what's making you feel a wee bit shitty because Aye. you're having that that kind of like you're probably having that because there's something deeply rooted. I, I, that's where my head's going. Aye, with it. Aye, aye. Might not be the case, but like if you have good quality food, like you said, you start to become more sensitive towards. Oh my god, an apple tastes amazing. Mm-hmm. That banana, was aye, that? that's, that's good. Right. Right, and then you have the sweet, like you say, the chocolate fudge cake. Does it taste as good? No, not even that. You have like you're like I'm stuffed. So you then good, you then have those reactive signals. Sooner, like you say, going to these shitty restaurants, you eat it, and then afterwards you're like, I feel fucking shit. You shouldn't feel like that after no, a meal. No. Now, I'm telling you as the as the coach here, but I've been in situations where I'll overdo it. But it's it's not a it's not a it needs to be super dialed in all the time. Four or five weeks down the line, having the urge to have another Domino's pizza, I might do it again, and then I feel shitty. I might have to do that seven times in a row over the course of two years. But tell you now. I'll never get a Domino's pizza. I mean, I'm not saying never, but I know I won't eat a full Domino's pizza because I've remembered and been aware of how that made me feel. And it's not the healthiest pizza. It's not by all means not the healthiest thing in the world. But I'll know that that, that sort of exposure, and that's the best way to look at nutrition. Like like you said, yes, you want to move away from it, but that's how you break the cycle of that. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. there's a reason that you're going for the shitty stuff. Like That's like any addiction. Aye. No one with any addiction goes cold turkey and sticks to it. No. It's very, very rare. Mm-hmm. They always go back, they always relapse, and then it gets to a point where they will hit a point where, yeah, they may go back one time or another, but they'll go, I don't like this, it didn't make me feel bad, but I'm never going back again. Yeah. And then that's when you know you're fully, because food is an addiction, mm-hmm. and people who eat these kind of foods all the time, when they know it makes them feel shit, if you eat a food and you know it doesn't make you feel good, that's severe addiction. Yeah. So the, the, the pillars around nutrition... Also, everyone's going to be individualised. You've got your own identity, your own fingerprint towards how you react to that nutrition. Comes down to the key thing. So you got your um, high in uh, not processed foods. So um, whole natural foods as yeah. best that you can. Very little ultra pro- processed foods, should we say? Yeah. I know. I remember. I was looking at. I, I, I kind of mind who it was, but they were like, you know what? If you've got depression, 
first thing to look at is your diet. And I was like, you know what? Like, I've experienced this firsthand. When I used to eat shite, I went to the gym and I still felt shite. I looked at my body and I was like, I don't feel that great. No. And I was like, I know I look good. Like, I know I look good, but I didn't feel I look good. good. Yeah. If you get me at the same time, see, as soon as I started eating better and you don't feel that shitty way and you look at yourself and you see what you actually truly see, mm -hmm. you're like, fuck man, it was like, it was my diet all the years. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously other habits as well, but it was what I was putting in my body. No, I know, I know. Um, but I, that also goes into like illnesses and stuff. Like mm -hmm. we don't know so much about the gut and how it affects our brain chemistry and all that sort of stuff. So it's mad. It's mm -hmm. mad. Right. So that's probably some some good key points. Dale's, to think Dale's about a bit hangry because his camera keeps session. cutting off. This right. You so might not Dale's be able to... camera is cut off three times already. Four. Four times. Four times. <laughs> might be a fifth one if we don't hurry up and finish this. But <laughs> right. So he's sweating like <laughs> he's yet. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but he's head sweating. <laughs> right. So another foundational pillar is relationships. Yeah. The people in your life, mm -hmm. um, friendships, partners, family. Mm -hmm. Like, the, I think there's a strong correlation with loneliness and actual longevity. Yeah. Like, if you don't, it, it kind of goes into the next point as well, but if you're not, you're not surrounded by some good people with good, like, just relationships, good communications. Good values. I, well, that's what I mean, values as well. Um, that there was a I can't I could, I'm going to actually try and find this stat while you while you try and speak about this as well. But something crazy that smoking ten cigarettes a day or twenty cigarettes a day is just as bad for you than someone who's lonely who doesn't mm. have any people Aye. in their in their, in their life. And I think that's quite a hard one. So it's like how how would you go about attracting friends? So did you did you go through a lonely spell when you were you you did you, you kind Mate, of, many yeah. so like many what, many what, did you ha what were some of the things you had to do like environment wise then to be honest I met most of my mates at raves but they never <laughs> turned no but they never turned out to be the kind of people right and uh, I've said this to many people I've picked all my pals mm -hmm. my pals are hand picked and that's because I went I like this person this person's sound life. yeah I like this person this person's trustworthy uh, yeah we don't really see the same ways we ever have now. But I can still call them at any time. Like we can still speak about any any time if I see them. We're always it's a good time. Yeah. And I think one of the things that people forget is you know you need to play even as an adult. Mm -hmm. You need to have a laugh. You need to have fun. But without and all my mates have they've calmed down as well. You know what I mean? We've all calmed down. Yeah. Some of them still go out sometimes, but everybody's settling down. Everybody's got everybody's got girlfriends. Everybody's starting to get houses. Starting to think about having kids. That's where they all at. That's where it comes <coughs> to. But. The core value that I'll be seeing to them is with you know, the trustworthy. Yeah. They were the pricks. There was Aye. nobody in the group. You go, he's a fucking asshole. I've got a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're still in the group, so it's just what you expect. But, but uh, no, you're right. It's about, so here's the stat here: prolonged social isolation and loneliness is the equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. How fucking mental is that, right? So where does that come from? The stress so, of it. So uh, there's an article here. Um, actually, it's a study here so it'll be interesting to see the kind of long I can't remember the ends now this was something this was like I 2018 um I'm not even going to try and read this <laughs> I'll completely butcher it but I'll put it I'll put, we'll put the link to it I'll save the link and maybe actually post this on my social media today I think another thing you think about relationships is you've got to understand that not everybody cares about the stuff that you care about the same way you do and that's okay and that's what mm -hmm. that is 100% okay and as soon as you understand that you feel a little bit less lonely as yeah. well because you go yeah, I would like to tell them that. Yeah, I would like to them to have a good response to that. But see, at the end of the day, they don't care about it as much as me, and yeah. that's okay. Some of my some of my friends couldn't give a fuck about running a gym business, nah. or, or even some of them maybe not as much into health and fitness as I am. Aye. But when we meet up, we have a good laugh. There's good banter, and Aye. that's the value of that friendship. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas different people will provide different value in your yeah. life. Um, so I know it's, it's crazy so changing like you said changing your environment to me is kind of finding something to people who have similar hobbies with you because they'll have different lifestyles Aye. even though you have the same hobby Aye. like people are so different yeah. and that's something to maybe like what's some of the things you like doing so many Facebook groups for everything these days Facebook groups for hill walking go plunges all this sort of stuff Aye. join them get out of your comfort zone a wee bit and, and try that you make making friends for life is probably the, the one thing like if one problem can't... that I've seen with a lot of my clients who one's into fitness and one isn't this, that was going to be my next point is when it comes to one's into health and fitness and one isn't it's a serious strain relationship mm -hmm. because the lifestyle change is massive yeah. they don't expect it to be they just think they're going to go to the gym eat a little bit better 
but then they find out it's not that. And but then they find out they want to do. But it's not yeah. that. They this want to make life changes, and then they see their partner not, and they're like, "Wait, you know? Yeah. Like, is this like we're not getting on the same? Yeah. And it's in you. I know, like some of your clients and my clients have went through this as well. But even career-wise, like somebody's trying to do something different in the career that they're doing, but they're not getting the same support from their partner. Aye. And it kind of brings you down. Yeah. It kind of leads you back to that isolation, that loneliness, that depression. Like, it's mental. That's the thing. Whoever you're with, they're going to do what they should want to do. And that's where you got to... Like, you got to... You be selfish. you got to be, be selfish. And they got to be selfish as well. Exactly. And you got to let them be selfish. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if they're 40 and they've not done what they wanted to do... They've got to blame you. They've got to have resentment aye. for you. Exactly. That's how relationships... Probably don't last. <laughs> so, I crazy impact that your health can have by your friends and your family, your partner, your loved ones, whatever. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, on to the last pillar, which leads nicely on from the topic that we're talking about. You're picking your friends, but you also need to look at your values, your purpose, your why. Like, you need to be driven towards something. Now, it doesn't need to, like, most people go, well, I don't really care about monetary Any? things and Aye. don't care about anything they, but it's important to find what it is like because if you go life without that you like similar to why there's a there's another stat out there on how many people actually die after uh, retiring because they don't have that purpose they don't have the need to get up every day so the routine falls away they um, slip up in some of those things like it's crazy like how many people I would see her retiring from BT and retiring from Open Reach when I worked there Aye. and three four years later they had died I was like the ah, fuck yeah. they, such and such has died. Aye. I was like, they're so healthy. Like, what happened in that space of time? And it was because the 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 purpose in their life was, was their BT? work. Was Aye. their work? BT. Was their um, seeing their colleagues and having relationships in life? And likelihood is, when you leave a job, like it's very rare you stay in contact with a lot of people. So that was that was kind of uh, like, this was came to my, the forefront of my mind when I'm thinking like this is probably one of the most valuable things that you need to do. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like, your why might be for your kids. Your why might could be, be earning, for could be earning career. It but it needs be to be the right why. Mm. You can't just make a why because oh, I think that would help them, or I think that would give them a better life. Your why still got to be for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But this is when it gets deep and personal when we're talking about space and you're thinking like, what is life and ah, yeah. all this sort of stuff. And um, so I, I think it's honestly, a see when you go self-employed. I don't. I, this is me personally, and I'm speaking from me personally. I'm not speaking about anybody else. I fucking hate working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I fucking hate it. Yep. I fucking hate it with a passion. And I just don't understand how someone can be so happy working for somebody else. Yeah. And that's me personally. I physically can't understand it. You're happy going to your work to work for somebody else? No me. So I I, I don't mind working with somebody else who's above me. Uh, that's fine. That's I th different. I think um I had this conversation with with an old team member and they had a they had a brilliant point that they said, look, I like stability. I like getting my paid holidays. Oh, aye, aye. And that gives me enough to have a good life with my family. And, I, and I was, see, when I heard that, I was that's like... That's his why. I was like, okay, cool. He's got his why. And, and that's that's literally what it comes down to. That's fair. Um, for someone that doesn't know their why or purpose, I think it's... You, you need to try so different shit until something sticks. Mm -hmm. That's really what it, what it comes down to. Um, I've managed to find my why, mm -hmm. and your why will probably change throughout your life. Oh, aye, like, because mine's was different when I was 20 aye. than what it is now. Aye. Like, and it'll probably change in the next five years, in the next five years, yeah. and so on and so forth. But having a strong purpose, like, you, you, it's going to help with consistency, it's going to help with showing up for some of these things. It's going to help with general happiness. Yeah. Do you go to bed and go, I say this to my client the other day, do you go to bed? And you go, why don't you go to work tomorrow? Or do you go to bed and go off? Oh, actually, I'm... Work. Like, it's just a normal day. Aye. Like, you just go. Aye. But some people go, oh, I need to go to work tomorrow. You do that every single night. It's not it's 365 days a year. Year on year. No wonder you aren't that happy sometimes. Yeah. And like, some people have more choices than others, but at the end of the day, like, you, you need to take ownership of your situation. And some people do have bad, See, honestly, see, I... I, I I had fuck all and I went to an agency and I'd done the shittiest jobs for seven, eight weeks in a row. I was getting paid minimum wage, doing the shittiest jobs. I was working my butt off. I had zero savings, zero. I ended up getting a decent job and ended up getting kicked out of my house with £500. That £500 paid my first month. 
I had to make sure that my neck. So I, I, I was getting nine pound an hour, mm. and then I had to pay everything. Mm. So I had a, a fancy fiesta because obviously I was. Uh, what man? I had enough. Aye. But I was like, I was like, fucking man. I was like, I had to pay a house. I had to pay all my bills. I had to pay for a motor. I only paid. I only made nine pound an hour. I worked fifty hours a week. Did make a sacrifice? Right. So I was like, do you know what? I was like, see, you're, like, if it, this is what sometimes people come to say to me. There's no jobs out there. I done the shittest jobs there was. And I remember in my old job, they were taking the piss out of me and my pal, because I've got my best pal in there. And they're like, there's rat poison up there, you just need to go and, no, there's been rats in there, you'll need to go and get hazmat suits and you need to go and clean it. I was like, I sound, get, get, us, a, get us the suits and I'll go and do them. And the owner was like, we're only kidding on. But the fact you said you was dead, it's good. I was like, right, mate, I'll I mean, fucking do anything, I don't, right? don't want to be the bomb. Aye. And then I got to a point in that job where I was like, there's no actual progression for me in here, but I did try. Mm. Like, I was trying, and mm. I was like, you know what, I don't want to have off somebody. I was like, I don't know what the fuck I want to do. Mm. And then COVID hit. I was like, I still don't know what I want to do, but I started doing deliveries because I was like, what can I do? I was looking at things, and one of the things was day, day deliveries. Job, I was like, you know what, I fucking want to do deliveries. So I never trained, never done anything. So for four months, I was furloughed, but I was doing deliveries two times a week. And then it was three, and it was four, and then it was five. I was doing deliveries for a Chinese five nights a week. Mm. And then I was doing just eat. And then I was going back to my other job and I was still doing deliveries five nights a week, mm. doing 50 hours of my warehouse work. And I think I'd done that for like three, four months straight, right? And I made a fuck ton of money. Mm. And I was like, fuck man, like, that was shit. But I go to the, the place that so many people are in. Your rut, yeah. That rut that people are, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, mm. I don't have any money for a house. I've been there and I go to it mm -hmm. well having to run my own house. Mm -hmm. And then I went, you know what, I want to be a PT. Because I started getting back into the gym. Mm -hmm. I was a wee skinny bastard. Mm -hmm. And then I found my why. Exactly. But my why, my why before then was I just don't want to be this skint guy. Aye. I don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck. That was my why at the time. But it's and constantly then, evolving. Then my why was I want to be a PT. I want to do it well at that. And I want to see where that goes. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at the new. But... I had my why, and my why at the time was I had to work eight hours a week. But that's why doing shitty jobs. Aye, that's why, that's why you were going down the path of finding the next part because it led you down that path. If you're just going, all oh, right, this is cool, and aye, you're just aye. swanning through Comfortable. life. Comfortable. Like good, I truly believe good things come to people who are trying, and mm -hmm. good things come to people no, who, who are really actively looking for it. But might not be the, this week, might not be next week. I got maybe. a delivery job in the Chinese that I wanted, but I went to thirty or forty Chinese. And I walked in and I was like, here, I'm looking for a delivery job. Here's my details. I got a call back from four or five and I says aye and I started in another job. And the Chinese that I wanted to work in, which uh, Lee Wong and Mo send, they weren't open yet. And then they text me, says, here, do you want a, do you want a Sunday? I was like, aye, 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 fucking here we go. They and then, can, then, he, phoned me, the then door, he phoned man. me back and he's like, do you want a Friday as well? Because mm -hmm. we've this person's quit. So I went for then... A delivery job, right, I was making 50, 70 quid. So mm -hmm. I was making about a 10 or an hour doing this delivery job. It was shite, right? Okay. Making, a, making a delivery job. And then, then, because I tried, I went to 40 different places. It took me three hours of my time just in lockdown when I was feeling shite. And I went into all these places, got rejected after so fucking many. And then I went for making six, 50 to 70 quid on a, uh, on a night to my first night in Lee Wong. I made 200 quid. I was like, ah, Wow, man! <laughs> but that was peak lockdown. Yeah, and I was making, I was making about thirty pound an hour, mm -hmm. right? Crazy just delivering food, and I was like, holy shit! And then obviously that starts to come down, and I go right, I need to find my next why. Like the the comfortability of that is leaving. You know, but you had it like you didn't have a set out action plan, but you had like right, try, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and mm -hmm. then as soon as you like, you know, the, the the beauty of that story is you were never complacent in what you were doing, right. and that's probably that's probably something to take away there like your why doesn't have to be something static but has to be something you're driving towards mm -hmm. and in pursuit of driving towards that it'll keep you healthier mm -hmm. fitter it'll keep your relationships good like all these pillars tie into each other you can't do one without the other this is everything that you kind of need to do and you just need to try keep trying with your work trying, keep trying. Your mobility your nutrition your relationships like it was, a few, it was honestly wife. a few weeks later I held back I held back a few long and from there I went for zero savings still no saving figure but I've got enough enough money for a house for deposit. <laughs> I've got enough money for a house for deposit. I've got enough to live by. I've got I've done enough to move over here and lose money. I've done enough to do my PT stuff. I've still got uh, other savings accounts. Mm. No, a crazy amount of money, but I've got enough. enough 
to and get I would you never to... have had that. Aye, but... I went in that house with zero. But it's allowed you to go and take a risk. That, or like a risk, this, a, 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 a a risk, risk free, like no is, no is detrimental to someone who has got everything on the line type of thing. You've, you've built up that me, safety net. You don't need money. If I didn't have money in this time, I wouldn't be doing the job that I'm doing. Money I is so important. So if uh, when people say to me, if you don't need money, what's the point of money? Look, the point of money is the freedom to do what you want. Yeah. I wanted to be a PT and I knew that ages ago, but I'm glad that didn't happen until I was 25 because I wouldn't have the experience with people to go to actually be able to train them that way. Yeah. No, that's brilliant, brilliant. So there you have it. That's how you build your physical pension. That and is it's something that we'll be doing. I think we've got got some really good points in there. Um, as always, guys. Then let's wrap up there yep. before this camera dies again. And then <laughs> the, the next time we'll actually be on. There. I wish you. Uh, when the are we doing next podcast? Wednesday. Nah, I don't think it'll be up yet. No. Mm, next, next one. Aye, aye. Next, we, next one. We need to learn the the skills of being engineers. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a fucking headache. Gonna have to pay attention to audio. <laughs> and the cameras. Camera. It's gonna be so fucking mad. But anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, that's gave you some food for thought, helping you become healthier, stronger, and sexier individuals as you start to get older. Yep. Um, I love the phrase like just because you're getting old doesn't mean you have to feel old. That's another one. That's another oh, banger. I, fucking but you don't. You no, don't. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. If it feels old. <laughs> we don't. I have no idea. Not yet. Not Tw- yet. Twenty six this month. Aye. So who knows? So as always, guys, you can find us on Instagram. You can find me at Coach Crosser. And you can find me at Roger Fit. We'll see you guys on the next one. Have a nice one.